So now the UV cabinet has been running for half an hour and we have a clean space to work. The first thing you need to ensure is that you turn off UV lights, sure. which is the second switch. Then you turn on the first switch, which gives the light. You open the cabinet and place the reagents inside. Uh, another important thing here is that you bring up your calculations and that you have done in the preparation steps because you need to follow this very accurately to get the best results. So I like to place them here so I can actually look at them when I'm working. The next thing that is also very important to do is that either change gloves or try to make the gloves clean with ethanol. Because this place is super clean and we want to keep it that way. Now we can take the chair and sit down. And here we are going to work for quite a long time. So it's very important that you find a posture as it's good for you. So be careful with your back. And when we are in the cabinet, it's very smart to be very systematic because we will do a lot of pipetting, both in the PCR reaction tubes, but also when it comes to the master mix itself. And while we are doing the pipetting, uh, I have also on the clean lab bench that we were at, uh, I have taken out the samples from the freezer so they can also be de-iced. Okay. So the first thing I do is to always keep my hands inside the cabinet. Uh, and then I take the marker pen and I write M for master mix on the empty tube, Eppendorf tube that we uh, sterilized earlier. I place it in the green rack. That is my main working rack. I like to orient the different buffers uh, or react, uh, uh, different uh, chemicals so that it follows the order of when I need to pipette them. And the last thing I do is also take the PCR water that has also been sterilized and place it in the same reaction uh, for rack as well. And then based on the calculations I have over here, then I select the correct pipette for the different uh, chemicals. And normally you use a quite big pipette, like either 200 or 1000 for the reaction buffer that has a quite high volume. You use normally the 100 pipette or sometimes even the 10 microliter pipette for the DNTPs, the primers and the polymerase and then you go back again to the big pipette with water. So I will show you how this is done. I take a pipette, I take my box of 1000 microliters, I open the tube and I hold it in one hand. Um. Sometimes these ones can be a little bit hard to open. This was worked out. There we go. I place the cap on a clean place. Attach the pipette tip. Take it down mm. and suck it in. Okay. And then I place the reaction buffer and open the master mix. And put it in. Then I detach the pipette tip, screw on the cap, and I place it in a new row in uh, the rack with the reagents. This is to keep track of which reagents I have used. Then I do the same procedure with the DNTPs. Open the lid and I also open the lid there. And here I change the pipette tip to the right type. And I do the procedure again and pipette it slowly inside. When I'm pipetting, and I can illustrate this with the water, 
I like to have a slight angle on the pipette tip. This can be shown here. Here I used the 200 ones. I like to have a slight angle. Push it down first. Suck it slowly up. Close the lid and open the lid and place it inside. Also with the angle, so the tip touches the wall of the Eppendorf tube. Then get rid of the tip and remember to always try to close things as often as possible so you don't get any contaminants in the tubes. Okay. Uh, so the last reagents we put into the master mix is the water. Uh, so then I take up a vial of water and firstly I actually open the tube of the master mix. I take open the 1000 microliter pipette box, open the water vial, take a pipette tip, suck up the water from, and this needs to be the correct amount uh, according to the calculations. Close the lid. And here it's very important that you push in the water and you mix it up and down 10 times. This is to get a nice and homogeneous uh, solution. So it's terribly mixed. And now, the master mix is done and we can close the bit. So while I've been working on this process, I have ensured that I moved all the reagents from the top row to the bottom row. So I always keep track of what is happening. Okay, so now I can bring the reagents back to the clean working area on the bench and at the same time get the samples. But there's some important things I need to mention before I move. Uh, the first thing is that if you're doing many reactions, you need to do this procedure on ice because the polymerase and the other reagents are temperature sensitive. So are you going to do more than 20 reactions? I would highly recommend doing the whole thing on ice. Okay, then I will bring this back and put the reagents into the freezer and also get the samples. Here we have the samples uh, and this is quite a lot of samples. Uh, some of the samples are very important to always include. Uh, and when I talk about this, it's what's called a positive and a negative control. The negative control, it's kind of our check if we have any contaminants, while the positive control, it's a mixture of organisms that we do know and that will always give a good signal if the PCR reaction has worked. So it's very important to always have a negative and positive control. The positive can control can also be very useful for steps that happens when we are analyzing the results as well. And before I start by petting here, since I've touched the box, it's again important that I try to clean gloves or change the gloves. So always be very aware of this.